Right well, in the corridor door. Okay. Now down in the locker room, Cliff Godwin is joining us after this 10-2 victory over Appalachian State. And, Coach, congratulations on the win. Congratulations on the sweep. Got things started very quickly offensively and just kept the pedal down here. This was a relentless offensive attack today. Yeah, I thought our guys all weekend did a really good job of keeping the chain connected, one through nine. Whatever our plan was, they did a really good job, much better than we have done previously. And we were able to get some more freebies. We won the freebie war again. Offensively, we walked and were hit by pitches more than we struck out, which is a positive. And we had some guys put some good swings, make it really hard on their pitchers and continue to add, which was key. Get different guys in the game um, that hadn't been out there, you know, like a Dylan Lawson, Skylar Brooks was was good. And also big Nate Napholz coming in. So then it allows you to go into Tuesday with your bullpen rested, which it has not been rested a whole lot this year. So that's a little bit of a breath of fresh air. Oh, yeah, that's good. Uh, Friday, obviously, you had 14 strikeouts a day, having nine. Uh, what is your plan going forward on having to keep your uh, pitchers fresh and making sure they can do as well as they can? Well, look, if we can score 10 runs every game, Brick, it'll keep some of our, our pitchers fresh. So that, that helps keeping the pitchers fresh. But really, just different guys are going to have to continue to get better. You know, we've had a guy like Nick Logish who has emerged uh, and, and different guys. So it can't be Bridges, Colmore, Mayhew, uh, every single time. So uh, different guys have pitched better. Also, Gavin getting healthy um, will continue to help. Carter Spivey continue to get healthy will continue to help. So, you know, we need those guys uh, as we continue to get closer to conference. So the best way to honor Keith LeClaire this weekend was to finish the job and get it done with a victory today. This was the type of wall to walls from start to finish effort that would make your head coach pretty proud, wouldn't it? Absolutely. I get chills when you mention his name, but for us to not play very well on Wednesday night against Old Dominion, not have a fresh bullpen going into Friday night and the guys coming out really taking control of that game, tough game yesterday, and then really just putting the nail in the coffin and that would make Coach proud. I know he's smiling down and so proud to just wear 23 at all, all the time for me, but for our team to be able to do it, it's the highest honor I can think in, in college baseball. And I think we're probably the first team to ever do it, and we're going to continue to do it um, as long as I'm the head coach here. So uh, I'm just super blessed to be the head coach here and, and just to honor coach. Coach, one heck of a job here this weekend, and then we will talk to you Tuesday in Durham, all right? All right. Thanks, Corey. Thanks, Brick. No problem. Okay, we'll open up the questions for Coach Godwin now. Coach, Ben Newton really had a great weekend, got the start two days in a row. Just what have you seen from him, and what have you think, thought from his at-bats this weekend? Uh, number one, Ben has really improved as a hitter since he's been here and has really been taking quality batting practice for close to a year. And the biggest thing he had to just prove to himself is that he could actually do it. And we kept telling him that, hey, we think you're great. But for him to actually believe it, I know that sounds crazy, but that's a hurdle for a lot of baseball players at times. It's just they got to believe that they can actually do it. And Ben looked obviously great yesterday. But today, if you just watch his takes and just his um, – the way he has slowed the game down in the box, he's really confident right now. And it's just great to see because he's a really good player. Coach, you talk a lot about 11 game segments. You guys go nine and two in the first 11. I know it's very early in the season, but do you like what you see from your team early on? I do. When we, we've talked about it, you know, the past couple days. Don't, I didn't talk about it early a whole lot because I wanted to be focused. But if you can get eight and three in the five segments, then you can get 40 games. And then you have kind of a mulligan game because that's 55 games. So uh, really proud to be better than eight and three. And we'll probably need it because once we get into conference, those four game weekends, it's going to be tough to maneuver through and navigate eight and threes. But we'll take these wins. We'll take the nine and two start. And we need to just start at a clean slate and start 0 and 0 going into Tuesday night against Duke. Coach, what did you see out of Carson Wisenhunt today? And in the fourth, when you went out, 
um, when Coach Dietrich went out for the pitch and change, Zach Womack went out with him. Did you think he tightened up or were you just being a little cautious? Yes. So uh, at Georgia Southern, when he fell on the mound, his back tightened up. So just want to make sure, make sure he's good. Uh, that's the most his pitches he's thrown in college was at Georgia Southern. And we just want to make sure, look, he's got a lot of baseball in front of him. So make sure he is uh, healthy and he felt good. And really, Coach Dietrich cha challenged him to go out there in the fifth inning and throw 15 pitches or less. I think he threw nine. And he could have went back out for the six. But we wanted to keep his pitch count this week because uh, he, he might pitch on Saturday next week. Um, so wanted to keep it down if – you know, the game was a lead. Now, if it had been a one-run game, he probably would have went back out there because he felt good. So it worked out. A lot of times when, when you have those plans in the back of your mind, it doesn't work out, but it worked out as, as good as we could ask for today. Luke, how nice was it to have fans back this weekend, the jungle making some noise out there, just to bring some, some Pirate Nation energy to the ballpark? First off, Tyler, great to see you. It's our one-year anniversary of your – if we'd have lost last year. So I'm going to drop it after this, but I had to just remind <laughs> you of that. So if we'd have lost today, we'd have won the series, but we didn't. So we, uh, we swept them. Um, but no, it's awesome. And Tyler, I'm, I'm, I'm joking. I hope that, you know, I was pissed last year, but I am joking right now. So um, no, it's awesome. And Saturday and Sunday felt more normal back to normalcy uh, as it has in a year. And it's just great for our players, it's great for our fans of the excitement. You know, we're only having 1,200 fans here and just the purple gold chances. It's just great, man. It's great for college baseball. We're doing it safe and just really cool to see Pirate Nation out in full force and great weather and getting wins. I appreciate the humor. Also, just want to thank you for always being well-framed on the screen for TV purposes. Is it bad? Because I, I, I'm looking no, at it's... myself, I feel like it's pretty good. No, you do a great job, so I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Well, just let me know if I'm getting cut out of the screen. Yeah, we wouldn't want you to be cut out, right? Yeah. Thanks, Tyler. I appreciate it. Okay, any other questions for Coach Godwin? Coach, any update as far as the timetable on Hoover at this point, or is it still too early to say? Uh, he's going to have surgery on Tuesday. So I'm not going to get into the details, but he's going to have surgery on Tuesday. He's got some fractures in his face, which we felt pretty confident in. Um, he's going to get better. Um, who We've communicated pretty much every day. He's a stud. He's going to get surgery, and it will be anywhere from four to six weeks. So um, it's allowing a lot of different people to get out there and play, which is going to help us down the road. And we're not going to make excuses for Lane Hoover, everybody – is going to be a little bit better. You know, we talked to a couple of the older guys um, early in the week, and hey, everybody needs to be about 2 or 3% better. If we can do that, then we won't miss Hoof. Of course, we miss his energy, uh, miss his smile. You know, I call him Big Hoof. He calls me Big Coach. So, but he'll be back before we know it, and he'll be a spark for us when he gets back in the lineup. Cliff, one more question regarding Tuesday's game against Duke, team you just played a couple weeks ago. How do you rest, recover, and get ready for that game? So tomorrow we'll lift weights to position players. You know, a guy like Seth Cadell who has caught a lot, he'll, he'll do a little bit of a different lift. Uh, most pitchers will just do some mobility stuff unless they're starters to get ready. I have no idea who we're going to start on the mound yet against Duke. We'll figure that out tomorrow. It'll be somewhat of a staff day, I'm sure. And we'll take a few hacks in the cages with the guys that have been playing a lot. And then some of the guys that haven't been on the field every day will do a little defensive stuff. But it'll be a shorter practice tomorrow so we can get ready for a quick turnaround to head to Durham. OK, Coach Godwin, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you, guys. Go Pirates. OK, everybody, we're going to have Francisco in here in just a second. How are you guys doing? Hey, Thomas. Uh, we're going to go right to questions for Thomas. Thomas, first off, how nice was it just having fans here this weekend? And how much of a boost do you think they got? They gave you guys? Oh, yeah, it was awesome. You know, we uh, we love the fans. Uh, they bring so much energy to the to the ballpark. And uh, Clark Claire is just so much better with them there. 
Thomas, it's, it's, it's never easy to sweep a team, um, but how important was it to come back and, and play you guys' brand of baseball this weekend after what happened Wednesday? Yeah, you know, Wednesday, uh, we didn't play our best game, but just had to flush it, come back here, and, uh, we, you know, we treat every game. Uh, Coach always says it like a separate entity, and uh, so that's that's what we did, and fortunate enough, we came out with a sweep. Thomas, the middle of the order today with you, Makarevich, and Seth Goodell, and really the whole top of the order, really just had great at-bats all around. Just how much confidence does it give you seeing other guys around you doing the same thing? Oh, it's amazing. You know, uh, just watching your teammates have so much uh, so much success is – you just it, we just feed off each other. You know, Norby up at the top of the lineup, he's – playing out of the out of this world uh you know amac and stump they're they're playing amazing it's uh it's just awesome that uh everything's clicking and uh you know every every single game is is a new season it's opening day so just trying to come in with a new mindset every day and uh try to win a game hey, any other questions for thomas this afternoon Okay, Thomas, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thanks. This is Brian Mudor from East Carolina University. You are listening to the Sports Objective, the official, unofficial podcast of the Pirates. (laughs) 